Uh, speaking of Vietnam, I uh, I brought in a uh, a bit of audio today. Spuds Buckley in the nub? No. Uh, didn't me and you fly a, a blimp over uh, Hanoi? No. And bomb? No. Oh, I thought we did something like that. Well, we start a bit. Uh, I don't know, over a month ago now, um, old school Opie and Anthony. Uh, basically, because I'm finally unloading, you know, boxes and boxes of stuff. And uh, today I bring to the show a radio show from 1970. I remember uh, that was the year we first got together. No! We in in uh, Vietnam. No. Old school uh, Opie and Anthony doesn't mean it's all just our stuff. Oh, oh. It's just stuff I've had uh, in boxes for a very, very long time. And I found this, and I, uh, and uh, wow, it's Dave Rabbit. This guy, I, like, E-Rock was doing some research on this guy. I had no idea. I, I've had this tape. Actually, uh, my good friend Stork. Yes. Stork from, uh, from Huntington. He, uh, he turned me on to this guy, Dave Rabbit. And uh, we've had this tape for years years like i've had this tape probably for like 20 years at this point and uh, i gave it to iraq it's on a cassette another one of these cassettes and iraq went through it and did some research and i guess he's like a he's a hero on the internet right yeah th there's been this big um this big thing surrounding him they never knew who the actual guy was up until a couple of years ago when the guy finally came out and said no this this was that me. was me and um, there, there's been clips of uh, his broadcast circulated through the military for years, and nobody knew who he was. He has merchandise and everything that uh, he he made by hand uh, back in 1970, where he was just drawing on old uh, made out of, out of ears and teeth. No <laughs> kidding. <laughs> he would have um, some kind of uh, paint, and he would just draw on these old sweatshirts and have um, Vietnamese kids selling them on the street for like two, three bucks. Wow! And uh, these things are big collectors' items. And and now he's residing in Dallas, Texas. So how old is he? Uh, he's gonna late, be forty, late fifties. That's it. Yeah. Well, this tape is what thirty. Mm. Wait a minute. Seven to thirty-eight years. No, he's got to be late fifties. Nineteen seventy. Well, maybe is thirty-seven years ago. So he could have been twenty. Okay, I suppose. Yeah, so. yeah, I guess. The youngsters were going to Vietnam, so I think he's like fifty-nine. 59, okay. All right, that's about right. All right, let's call him right around sixty. Um, and what's this isn't Good Morning Vietnam stuff, by the way, because Jimmy asked me uh, before the show. And no. This is not high energy. This is a guy that is uh, smoking a lot of weed or dropping something because he talks about acid a lot. Some of the dope. And uh, he's just doing a show for the guys in the field, and these guys are listening on their little transistor radios wondering if they're going to survive the day. Yeah. Oh, is that him? Yeah. Yeah. Why has he got to wear camo if he's on the radio? <laughs> I don't know. So his name's Dave Rabbit, and, uh, you know, He's going on a mission, I tell you, because we were all in camouflage when we uh, bombed that um, TV station open. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had, to take, we had to take out the communications. Uh, yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what, what, what did you yell at those people again? I don't remember. <laughs> did you remember? I don't, no, I don't, I don't remember. remember. Do I really, remember? Uh, I don't, I don't remember. Oh, what? Oh. What? What are you guys uh, doing? Someone might have a, a recollection. What are you doing over there? What are you doing? I think someone's remembering maybe what uh, Opie yelled. I don't remember. The battle cry. Well, maybe they can remember in a commercial break because the pace of the show is killing me. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> he doesn't... Well, what are you doing? I'm finding something that you... Oh, oh my Travis. God. Get back on the phone. Stop you little twink. Anyway, continuing the uh, the old school Opie and Anthony bit we started a while ago, this is, I, I, pre I present you uh, with Dave Rabbit today from 1970, 1971. Just a, just a taste here. We got a bunch Wait, of clips. How did nobody know who he was? Were these pictures new? Or did, yeah. Were they always out or no? No, the pictures only came out uh, um, a couple years ago. He actually released a letter to a couple of press organizations you know, stating uh, the history behind the tapes, uh, who he was, etc. Everything but his real name. Yeah, I, I need to know more about this uh, this guy. So uh, here we go. Dave brings the truth and hard acid rock. Listen to this. Good evening again, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host for the next three hours of hard acid rock music, Dave Rabbit. For those of you who have just recently come into the Republic of Vietnam, I'd like to give you a little information about it so your mind won't be quite so blown when you hear such words as and words of that nature. We're an underground radio station here, and we say what we feel like saying. And we bring the 
the truth to the first termers in the Republic of Vietnam. You got to change your evil ways. We also bring you hard acid rock music all through the night. The up to date music of today's American youth. I like this guy, man. How that's cool pretty cool. Is that? That's not good, but I die. No, that's like this is the real deal, man. That's history. How crazy is that? I like that stuff, guys. So he sounds like he has a cool voice, yeah. like Rod Sterling, yeah, and he just sounds high. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's probably so goddamn high. Yeah. Now, un underground. Does that mean like? He ran it or he was renting space. How does that work? You, know uh, you know what? I didn't know anything about this guy. E-Rock is actually helping me out. Um, he tried to get a job on the uh, Armed Force Radio Network. He was interning there. Which is the Good Morning Vietnam type Adrian of guy. Oh, right, right. Uh, they wouldn't let him go on the air. They wouldn't let him touch any of the equipment. So he just hung around and watched how they did everything. Um, through some uh, creative trading, he, he got some equipment and was renting a, a, a room in the back of a whorehouse in Vietnam. Uh. And uh, they tiled the studio with these uh, one-inch tiles and mattresses so to kind of deaden the sound so you wouldn't hear all the sex going on around the while they were broadcasting. So it's him and two other uh, servicemen are, are doing their show in the back room and uh, just transmitting. First, they started illegally. They were uh, tapping over the Armed Force Radio Network signal before their um, their time check and everything at 8 o'clock at 7.59. They were saying, Armed Force is uh, opening up a second channel, flip to uh, 69 on your FM dial there, <laughs> and uh, listen to uh, Radio First Termer. And then at 8 o'clock, the, the, the signal would hit and the, uh, the radio network would kick in. So then everybody flipped over to 69 and started listening to this for like a year and a half. Did you intern for them, uh, wow. Ira? Because I know you made the rounds a lot of radio stations. Yeah. No? No. Oh. Why did you... Uh, did, did, uh, this is, what's his name? David Rabbit. I like the garlic butter saw. <laughs> garlic butter saw here in country. Isn't that a great story? That was underground radio, man. He was like telling the real truth of what what was going on, uh, you know, in the field. What this is your job? first time in the Republic of Vietnam. Try the garlic butter saw <laughs> and the acid. Yeah. You want to hear a little more? Yeah, man. It's yeah. Cool. All right, this is Dave Rabbit. A message from the latrine walls. He used to do a bit, he did bit, uh, bits. Simple bits, but it's called uh, A Message from the Latrine Walls, giving you information. During the night, we're going to be reading some of the things off the latrine walls around the Republic of Vietnam. No. One of them. While I'm home, my wife is my right hand. While I'm away, my right hand <laughs> is my wife. <laughs> Crooked from the big 69. From the who? The who. <laughs> Yeah. How cool is that? As, as, as you just blast in a 50 cal over a trench. Right. Oh. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, I think they were trying to find this guy, too. He was getting way too popular. They didn't want... Uh, they didn't, they That's didn't... pretty dirty for uh, the, the day, huh? Yeah. Well, there was no FCC. Right? You're in the middle of no, nowhere. of course not. You want one more before the break? Oh, I want many zone. more. I yeah. love this guy. This right. guy's got a great delivery. More, yeah, he's more. I want to start doing that. More Dave Rabbit. Yeah, let's just all talk as much like, like him. Dave yeah. Rabbit. Pinball Wizard. Wizard. By the Who. I've had quite a few letters recently uh, concerning some of the different items that uh, Radio First Termer has to offer his followers. And one of the biggest things is the official Dave Rabbit sweatshirt. For those of you who are unaware of what a Dave Rabbit sweatshirt is, I'll tell you. It's a white sweatshirt. On the front of it, it has a large white rabbit. And the rabbit's is completely <laughs> The rabbit is carrying a sign. On the sign, it reads it before it f you. <laughs> if you like one of these Dave Rabbit sweatshirts, send a postcard along with 298. 298. Dave Rabbit sweatshirt, Radio Saigon, Underground, APO in Country, 96969. Cream. White Cream. And the hits just keep on. How cool is that? He's my favorite radio person ever. Yeah, that guy's delivery's great. 
I've the had, material's great. I've had this tape for over 20 years, man. I finally found it in a box. Let me ask you a question, though. With this guy, if he's giving out an address and stuff like that, and he's got letters, how could he do that? If the government wanted him gone, they would have traced him. So how, how did that happen? From what I understand, um, a lot of that stuff, they really, uh, the government was having a hard time because uh, it would go to... Uh, fake businesses or just farm people like oh you know, here's the address and then there'd just be a, a farmhouse there and they would just drop the mail off at the at these places and somebody would eventually come around and pick it up oh okay the guy was just a tech geek that figured out how to freaking do a radio show in the middle of vietnam like a real one do we know his real name now no no we're gonna we're gonna find out more about this guy but i guess i didn't even know that i have like gold in my uh possession because i guess the clips on the internet are really really bad quality yeah so this is like gold. It's hard to get a whole, uh, to get this stuff clear, right? Oh my God! And yeah, supposedly there's more stuff on the internet, but it's really, really bad quality in general. So we're gonna take a break. We'll play more from this tape. Uh, old school Opie and Anthony. Uh, you know, another thing I found as I unloaded boxes uh, the other day. Uh, it's Dave Rabbit from 1970, 71, somewhere around there, broadcasting live from Vietnam. Ugh. And uh, I found this uh, Dave Rabbit tape. It's not about us today. It's about this guy, Dave Rabbit. He did an underground radio show in Vietnam back in 1970, 1971. That was very, very different than what the government was putting out. Yeah. And much better than what the government was putting out. Oh, yeah. sure. Well, they blew Adrian Cronauer away. Yeah, we all know uh, Vietnam radio from, yeah, of course, Good Morning Vietnam. And I don't feel like really screaming it. But <laughs> this guy was doing the complete opposite. He was tripping. And just kind of, just kind of talking like a real Tell person. Dirty jokes. Oh yeah, dirty jokes and all sorts of stuff. So let's go right back to the tape. It's uh, Dave Rabbit, 1970, 1971, and uh, he talks about taking a bathroom break here. Listen to this. Cream with white room. Oh, he was a chatty Kathy, by the way, because he was he, he was talking after every song. I noticed. Oh, boy, would the PD have a field day with this guy. He was talking well into the song, too. Oh, I know. Over the vocals. He didn't give a crap. That's why I love this guy. Breaking all the rules. Yeah. yeah. Cream with white room. White. We're going to let this next one roll on through. Why? Well, for one reason, I've got to go take a big, heavy... <laughs> Heavy. Boring, unforeseen incidences that may occur during my trip to the latrine, such as being picked up for marijuana or stopping in and getting a quick f with one of the whores down the hall. I'll be back to finish this goddamn program. <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> <That was> hilarious. <laughs> Jesus. He got away with more in Vietnam in 1971 than we do now. <laughs> yeah. Sure. But Howard was the first, you know. Who, of, course, who? of course you were, Howard. Because a shock jock. Ignore all the people that came before you. That's that's great. Way to know the biz. Wow, how great is that? Like we uh, explained uh, during the last break, the guy was broadcasting a show from the back of a whorehouse. So hence the, I, you know. Yeah, getting a <laughs> beep from one of the whores. What do you want to get? Probably a cup of flour? Yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello? Bar some sugar, please? Yeah. Could you put it in your uh, beep? Oh, Let's go to... Uh, <laughs> beep. Never mind. <laughs> Let's go to Wes, the trucker. Wes. Good morning, b -b boys. Hey, man. Hey, I'll make this quick. Tell me this guy doesn't sound like Space Shuttle and Dumber. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Endeavor. A lot of people saying he sounds like Chris Hansen. Yeah. Uh, Rod Serling. Uh, who else? There's a couple others that came in. Damone? Damone. No, it's all about Rod Serling. Yeah. Come on. Let's hear more of this. Game. All right, here we go. That's all I want to hear. Well, let's cancel Lewis Black and cancel Terry <laughs> O'Quinn and listen to him. I will play more tomorrow because tomorrow I'm saving the good stuff for tomorrow where he's yeah. tripping on the air. <laughs> Completely tripping on the air and, and openly... Admitting it because he has no bosses. I'd love to know who was able to trip in Vietnam. <laughs> wow. Yeah, well. That would be a creepy trip. I hear it was very popular. Oh, well, of course. Uh, Tom just came down the hall and told me I can't mention that because they're not advertised. <laughs> this doesn't... <Yeah. laughs> it doesn't make good radio to trip on the air. No. That's right. Are you kidding me? Someone is tripping on the air and I'm listening every day. Of course. Every day. Here's... Uh, uh, well, we get to meet Captain Ivan... Pansy, and it, and he does the weather for uh, Dave Rabbit. I haven't listened to this tape, by the way, in easily 10 years. 
Time for another weather report from the 22nd attachment of the 30th Weather Squadron with Captain Ivan Pansy. Oh, my darling. All right, Captain, you're on the air. Darling. My darling, Clemens. Oh. Thank you, Dave, and uh, good evening, everyone. This is your uh, Midnight Cowboy, Captain Ivan Pansy, <laughs> with tonight's weather. Stop it, Ralph. Tonight's weather is uh, kind of screwed up, mainly because I've been kind of uh, hopped up on goofballs and haven't made a report up yet. Anyway, we'll give it a go and uh, see how badly I uh, can uh, screw it up tonight. tonight today's high uh, was 146 degrees in the shade. Don't know what it was in the sun. Wasn't stupid enough to go out in it. Well, tonight's <laughs> low should get down to uh, 69 degrees. Hey, 69, that sounds like a well-rounded number. The sun will rise at 0645 hours for you lifers and 6.45 a.m. for you um, first termers. It will shed at 19.45 hours for the maggots and 7.45 p.m. for the first termers. Well, Dave, that's about the way it looks on the weather scene for tonight. This is your midnight cowboy for the Saigon, the Trang, Fanrang area. Captain Ivan Pansy wishing you all a good I mean... Excuse me, a good evening. Now, Ralph, now stop it. Now, how many times have I told you to stop it? Thank you, stop Captain it. Pansy and Ralph. <laughs> and Ralph. And Ralph. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Pansy and Ralph. <laughs> Captain Pansy rules. <laughs> <laughs> they were just having a good old time. It's not like JFK, Captain Pansy. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that's what he was going for. He's doing little uh, bits and characters. They got a uh, cast. A cast of characters. And this was done in 1970? Yeah, you know. Don't even friggin' tell me who invented what. Jesus. Ah, it's always been out there, to be honest with you. Great stuff. You gotta kind of, you gotta respect the people that came before you. I want Captain And acknowledge that they did some stuff before you did. What? I want Captain Pansy to do the weather here every day. Yeah. Steve? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's general. <laughs> <laughs> He's been promoted. He sure has. I've gotten a promotion. <laughs> general fruit. With I'm a four-star pansy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> he got new new stripes on his knee pads. <laughs> I got gold clusters, but they turned out to be warts. <laughs> Let's go to uh, Jason in Carolina. Jason. Uh, hey, boys. Hey. Uh, I wondered if uh, Dave Rabbit ever cruised around Vietnam in a blimp. All right. All right. That's not nice. That's right. We're going to drop these bras on you, mother huggers. Yeah. yeah. The uh, <laughs> F U A B U. I hate you. Was the, uh, just in case you're wondering. Oh, my God. There's your answer, Jimmy. Nick in Cleveland, what's up? Good morning to you. Hey, O and A. What's going on? Hey, what's man. up, Nick? Hey, I just want to tell you guys the first time listening to you live in Cleveland, and uh, I'm glad you guys are back, man. I, we Thank you, sir. Specifically to hear you. I, I, and, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I just want to tell Jimmy that we're coming to see him, House of Blues, second show, dude. I can't wait to see you, man. Thank you very much, man. Both of those shows are sold out, so I appreciate House of it. Blues. House of Blues. Yeah, nice. We're, we're very excited about being live in Cleveland. I, I can't stress that enough, man. It's been uh, way too long because, I mean, yeah. we've, been, we've been on uh, tape delay in afternoons, but we haven't been able to talk to the people in Cleveland. I've been able to communicate, for a while, uh, so. have the people contribute, call in. It's yeah. nice. Really is. We've already ha or always had a very good uh, rapport with our Cleveland fans. Yeah, it's a it's a sick city. Uh, thank you, sir. Let's uh, let's go to Kevin in Connecticut. Kevin, what's up? Hi guys. Hey. Body at work. Yeah. Uh, can we find this stuff online somewhere? It's got beeps in it on the radio. Did you just say, I hate to bother you at work? Yeah. Well, first of all, I do have the. <laughs> That's a very funny line to tell a radio show. Yeah. I do have the uncensored stuff that we uh, we're gonna play a little bit uh, later on. A little later, huh? And uh, I, I'm starting to I'm starting to learn that I got gold in my hand here. Oh, I don't know do if you? I want to just throw it on the internet. Oh. Maybe it's time to make a buck or two. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll throw it out there. We'll, we'll figure it out. Maybe uh, throw a couple clips on ONA Radio dot com later today because I think Stephen S is, uh, wants it for the rundown. Thanks, guys. All right, and then we'll put the whole thing that I got. I I only got one show. I mean one. One show, I got about 30 clips. That's about it. Uh, huh? Good stuff. Yeah, I think it's great. Let's go back to a matter of yeah, fact. how many lost breaks there are, how many lost air checks, and just things that no one ever recorded. Yep. Yeah. Just Absolutely. Gone. Just for my uh, dopey uh, radio career, I'm like, why wasn't, I, why wasn't I taping? Well, you think you feel bad. You know some of the original Tonight shows, 
the dummies at NBC wanted to save money on tapes. So they just started taping years ago over some of the original Carsons that are, that are there are no copies in existence. So Oof. dumb. Just audio. Oh, there's audio. Wow. Audio. Oh, okay. Why didn't our like the people that came before us realize that maybe somebody wants to listen to this crap someday? <laughs> Eventually. Because then they do that with the honeymooners too. There's a few that they? That, they, that they just don't have tapes of or something like that, or they got mm. very very. Strange versions of it. The, Probably what? some of the originals, maybe from the Jackie Gleason show. Maybe, Cavalcade, yeah. And they yeah. yeah. Sketches. All right, let's get back to Dave Rabbit, 1971, Underground Radio from Vietnam. Uh, oh, yeah, this one's uh, this is good. Another message from the latrine walls. His bit. Cactus, you can't judge a book by looking at his cover. Here's another quickie from the latrines in the Republic of Vietnam. This guy writes, fighting for someone else's freedom is like f***ing for someone else's virginity. <laughs> yeah. Power. What, what, what was the, what did he say? Uh, hold on, mm. Something power? Oh, you're writing that? Oh, wow. Yeah, well, of course. Oh, yeah. Uh, basically, he said, <laughs> Power. Yeah. But use the uh, the T word for that. After I remove the ice pack, I use a deep pore <laughs> cleanser lotion. In the shower, I use a water activated gel cleanser, <laughs> then a honey almond body scrub, and on the face, an exfoliating gel scrub. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Patrick Bateman. <laughs> <laughs> They're picking up on your nail filing, by the way. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> They're really freaking ah, out. What oh, the I, hell is that? In caps. They're going, you got in there, a beaver? Oh. Enough with the nail filing. Oh, I'm enough sorry. About guys. the filing. I was just doing it because I, I have, my girlfriend always complains that my nails shuka, are shuka, 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 oh, shuka, shuka. I apologize, guys. Me and, <laughs> that's hysterical. Me and Jimmy are just filing away. I'm not filing nails, though. That's, that's kind of... Well, you're filing a scab. That's, that's healthy. Kinda, that's kind of gay. <laughs> I'm just filing healthy. a scab. Well, yeah, so I can't pick it anymore. It's time to like make this go away. How about you, you don't pick it? Yeah, well, that would be it, wonderful, and it goes Jimmy. away. How about yeah, you go, you... I'm not going to pick it. Yeah, that would be wonderful. I would love to do that, but obviously I can't. So now I got to do, I got to go to this stage where I file it down so it's so smooth I can't get at anything. Okay. And then it'll go away, hopefully. I'll put the file down. My apologies. I didn't know that was going on over the air. No. Had I known, I would have done this. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Rabbit would love you. Oh, no, Rabbit. Yeah, he would. All right, we got two more clips, and then we got to, like, uh, take a break. Then we get Lewis Black in here, and it, all hell's going to break loose. I guarantee that. Oh, and we then we'll see. We're going to save the rest of the clips for tomorrow, and uh, hopefully we're going to get Dave Rabbit on our show. Uh, E-Rock's in uh, communications uh, with this guy. Uh, Dave has a complaint right here. This f***er is so goddamn long. I could have gone downstairs and got a shot of back. Rambling. What is that? And you left. I a, a shot of back? What is that? It sounds like uh, he could have gotten one of the whores. Oh, really? Yeah. I was wondering if it was a drug reference. Mm -hmm. what if, I've never heard shot of back before. I didn't know what that was. Either. Could be a drink over there. Back could be some kind of Vietnamese, uh, like, you know, corn mm. liquor or something. Who knows? Yeah. All right. I, don't know. I, in I instantly thought it was sexual. <laughs> yeah. Well, why. it might be. He was complaining because the song was way too long. Because, you know, this guy liked to talk. <laughs> oh, this was in the middle of the song? Uh, the song was still going. It was like six minutes in, and then he just comes on and says how annoyed he is. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love this. You sure this guy isn't related to me? Just seems annoyed at everything. This is so goddamn long. I could have gone downstairs and got a shot of back. A shot of back. on with more music. <laughs> Iron Butterfly. Fly. Soul Experience. Speed kills. Slow down. Smoke grass. <laughs> Smoke grass. I love this. <laughs> Just babbling into the mic. And don't ruin it for me and show me a current day picture of this guy. I, I just want... Oh, I got an image. Really? He's hardcore. You think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If anything happened, he could pick up a uh, rifle and uh, take care of business. He's I living in the woods somewhere. Yeah. I saw him already. And? No, huh? Oh, boy. Um, don't, don't ruin it for me. I won't. Dr. Steve, I won't. Oh, boy. <laughs> 
Oh, boy. I'm not going to ruin it for you. He looks like anyone's father. Dr. Steve. Oh, boy. All right, one more Steve clip. looks like an intellectual. Yeah, he is. He's a doctor. Yes. <laughs> They're known to be bright. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He looks like he graduated high school. <laughs> well, uh, are you ready for the next one? Yes. Yeah. Iron Butterfly. Soul experience. Lifers are like flies. They both eat sh and bother people. <laughs> <laughs> so, so subtle, man. That's a great delivery. They both eat blank and bother people. Wow. And bother people. That is hilarious. That is Lifers. good. Lifers. Iron Butterfly. Soul experience. Lifers are like flies. They both eat sh and bother people. <laughs> and bother people. Thank you, Pete. Did you hear that? What was that, Pete in the background going, right on? Thank you, Pete. Do you like Huey Lewis in the news? <laughs> this is off of sports. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what? We got to play a couple more. Of course we do. We got a lot more, but we'll, we'll at least play the tripping on air. This is him tripping. Are people on liking air. this? I hope they are, man. This guy's. Uh, I, I think they are. What's the feedback say? Yeah, they're they're, they're digging this. It's different. Yeah. Uh, it's cool. It's like it's like we're the History Channel today. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's part of our our old school Opie and Anthony. Yeah. The stuff I I've been finding. It's I like love this unload guy. boxes Great. of crap. <laughs> Oh, that's obviously him. He's uh, <laughs> he's just uh, what is that? Funk sixty nine or something like that? Funk forty nine? Uh, the uh, six uh, James Gang, right? He's just messing around with James Gang. Yeah, uh, Dave Rabbit, nineteen seven. <laughs> <laughs> Sixty-nine, James Gang. Sorry about that yelling and screaming, but Pete and I are on a trip, and we thought we'd have to get in on that song. Here's one done by the Biggie, Three Dog Night. It's called Mama Told Me Not to. Now you can take this two ways. As a title, or your girlfriend's name is Mama. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's great. You ever hear the song? Wait, can you play? They probably didn't have to beep that out, but just no. trying to keep it safe. Can you safe. play that again? I, what, is it possible? Are you, yeah, yeah, sure. You know the Three Dog Night song? Uh, no, let me hear Let me see if I can figure it out. I don't know. Okay. It. I'm not going to look at the, the board. Mama told me not to... I have to play it again. I, I, I didn't. Fuck number 69. James Gang. Sorry about that yelling and screaming, but. Pete and I are on a trip, and we thought we'd have to get in on that song. Here's one done by the Biggie, Three Dog Night. It's called Mama Told Me Not to Now, you can take this two ways. As a title, or your girlfriend's name is Mama. <laughs> I figured it out. Yes. Yeah. It's a very famous song, by the way, so I think most people figured it out. Yeah. You know. What a funny joke. One more. We'll do yeah, the that's uh great. We'll do the PSA and then we'll leave it very clever. Leave it here and then we'll do more Dave Rabbit tomorrow. Underground radio from Vietnam, nineteen seventy, and hopefully get him on the show tomorrow. Uh it's like the Ron Bennington of Southeast Asia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's got a line. Hey, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Try it on <all> surf. <laughs> <laughs> hey, People are confused by all the cursing, but this was uh, underground, man. You can do whatever yeah. the hell you want. Uh, okay, here we go. The last one for today. We got more for tomorrow. Don't worry. It's a long little grass now. 
going back into music by Steppenwolf called The Pusher. Speaking of The Pusher, brothers and sisters, if you happen to be down by the Magic Finger Lounge any time tonight, keep away from the Korean at the front door. He's pushing some bad H. I repeat, he's pushing some bad H. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's helpful. Yeah. <laughs> That's good knowledge right He there. got his ass handed to him. <laughs> huh? I bet he got his ass handed to him. Yeah, thank you. Guy at the door. Oh, yeah. All right, we'll have more tomorrow, but we'll leave it at that. How cool is that? Is that cool? Amazing. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Guy's uh, got a great delivery. Uh, we gave some of the background info on him earlier. I'm oh. trying to listen to my new Robert Palmer tape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Susu Studio. This is Susudio. Yeah. Some say it's Phil Collins' best work. No one beats Patrick Bateman. I didn't like the spoken word. The book is, is one of my... I read the book three times. I, I, I know. The, like, the book is it's different it? than... No. It's much more graphic. For, I never saw the whole film. That's what I hear. Oh. But I just, I just love Christian Bale as as that psychopath. He's hysterical. The way he delivers his lines, look confused. Yeah. <laughs> Earlier this morning, did he hear us uh, playing the the Dave Rabbit tapes? No. Oh, this guy's the Holy fucking greatest. Shit, this is good. Seriously, we're gonna all relate. Apparently, now. this is very rare too. Supposedly, I got one of two copies. I'm learning. What? <laughs> I don't know. It was this guy, Dave Rabbit. He was in Vietnam, and he did an underground radio show. Oh, is this the guy I just... And he was smart enough... I, I, where's Z-Rock? He's got all the info on the guy, but basically he just was doing underground radio. He did the show... In Vietnam? Vietnam. Out of a whorehouse, right? Out of a whorehouse. A back room of a whorehouse. Here's Z-Rock to just reset the bit. Z-Rock, e reset. Go. Um... Yeah, just a really interesting guy. We don't know much about him, but uh, we're finding more info on online as we speak. Yeah, um, he rented out the back room of a whorehouse, built uh, the bedroom into a studio with mattresses and, and tile to prevent uh, you hearing sex going on around in the rooms around him. <laughs> and um, he would just broadcast, um, sometimes illegally, on the Armed Force Radio Network uh, wow. signal. And it, I was reading online. It turns out his show was more popular outside of Vietnam. Like in Germany and uh, other European countries where people were stationed, they used to trade these tapes around. So somebody was taping them in Vietnam and then mail them out all throughout the service. Well, was he like the Good Morning Vietnam guy? No, completely, but he's not completely, completely the other side. Why did I hear? I just heard instead of about high, him. Instead of high energy, he was like he was tripping. He was high. He was, high, <laughs> he was really mellow, but really witty, really funny with the one-liners. We have one. I want to hear him. Well, this is the one that we had to bleep on the other side, and, but we him. we have new ones for over here where he talks about like hand jobs, blow jobs, uh, the latest specials that the whorehouse is running. But here's uh, here's Dave Rabbit from 1971 in Vietnam. How cool Guys in the guy? field are just listening to this shit as they're hoping that they're going to survive another day. about that yelling and screaming but Pete and I are on a trip and we thought we'd have to get in on that song here's one done by the biggie three dog night <laughs> it's called mama told me not to come now you can take this two ways as a title or your girlfriend's name is mama <laughs> <laughs> How funny. great is that? Wow. Is that yeah. Awesome? 1970 or 71. Yeah. But in Nam. Yeah. In a warehouse. Yeah. yeah. Which clips do we have to believe? It's out amazing. That are really the lifers. Too. The lifers. Uh, the lifers are like flies. That's a funny one too. Oh wait, this is yeah. A, this one we should replay the the T-shirt because they had to bleep the shit out of it today. Uh, Think about it. Now, how long did it take to come to the surface? Okay. 
When you think it's about the it. Ne- mm. I mean, it's probably been circulating on tape and then with the internet. I've had a copy of this for 20 years. And I have you really? I found it in a box. Oh, you don't even know where you got it, do you? My, my buddy Stork, who got it from oh. some guy uh, uh, in uh, the Buffalo area, who might have another tape. We're, we're hunting it down. Because if, it, you know, if he'd been on, like, let's say it was today, if, we were, if this was today, and he was doing this, this like two days after he did the first you know, oh, show, yeah. and you it would be around something. the world. Yeah, oh, I know. <laughs> you know, it's amazing how this was traded around back in the day. This it's, is seventy. Yeah, it's got to mail this shit. <laughs> That's the postage right and all that crap. <laughs> Instead of pushing a button on your computer from Vietnam, yeah. <laughs> I think we're. I think we might talk to him tomorrow. We're hoping. Wow. But here's one where he was selling. He got so popular, he had stuff he was selling. This is a sweatshirt. He's selling stuff. Yeah, he was a marketing genius too. Pinball Wizard by the Who. <laughs> I've had quite a few letters recently uh, concerning some of the different items that uh, Radio First Termer has to offer his followers. And one of the biggest things is the official Dave Rabbit sweatshirt. For those of you who are unaware of what a Dave Rabbit sweatshirt is, I'll tell you. It's a white sweatshirt. On the front of it, it has a large white rabbit, and the rabbit's dick is completely hard. The rabbit is carrying a sign. On the sign, it reads, fuck it, before it fucks you. If you'd like one of these Dave Rabbit sweatshirts, send a postcard along with 298 to Dave Rabbit sweatshirt, Radio Saigon, Underground, APO in Country, 96969. Nine. Wow. Cream. White room. Wow. That guy is funny. That's funny. That guy is funny. Yeah, his, <laughs> yeah, his slogan was, the hits keep on coming. There's Fuck a t-shirt it. behind you there. That's Fuck it. Before uh, at the actual t-shirt. I, I want my brother to make a version of this shirt. Wow. Yeah. Fucking look at the big fucking <laughs> cock in the rabbit. Oh, Jesus. Funny. How about, can we get, um... He has more balls than Lance Armstrong. Oh, oh, oh we stopped. That was geez. Lewis. I'm sorry. His friend. She, yeah. Hey, do we have, wait, do we have any, uh... I want that clip with the flies. Uh, the the lifers are like the oh flies. yeah, that's the one I was asking about. E Rock, I, I think it's the second um, message from the latrine. It's uh, twenty two maybe. All right, we're gonna play new clips because I know people have been with us all morning. We got new clips just for XM where they're talking about the hand jobs, the blow jobs. <laughs> uh, I mean, see, this is just online. You can just pick it up. Um, I, 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 I mean, do you buy it? I don't know. Oh, I, you can download I, that. I found the tape, brought wow. it in, and I I had no idea how popular the guy actually is uh, still. So I got a. That's why. I yeah. just Here we go. Um, him. Uh, he did this bit called uh, "Message from the, the Latrine Walls." Just reading what people are writing on walls right. in the bathroom. Let's steal it. <laughs> you can't judge a book by looking at his cover. Here's another quickie from the latrines in the Republic of Vietnam. This guy writes, fighting for someone else's freedom is like fucking for someone else's virginity. <laughs> that's not the one. No. Twat power. Oh, that's the one we had to bleep oh, earlier, twat too. Power? Twat power? But power. Um, twat power. <laughs> hey. Uh, yeah, we got their attention. Uh, for the love of God, please go to AboveTopSecret.com. Dave has a radio show on this site. We'd love to have you here. Come on over. Dave is still as crazy as ever. I'm a moderator there. Contact me to, to Elevate Done, something like that. Ooh. We yeah, got I, his contact. I, I contacted uh, Dave directly last night, so we're going to try to get him on the Um It took a while before he would... Confessed that it was really him. Like he kept le- yeah. fishing for information from me before he would he would talk to me. What is he hiding out? He's been hiding out. Yeah, he's got the Vietnam mentality. Wow. <laughs> I mean, he's like still living the dream. Yeah, bro. look out! <laughs> he's still, he's still, still coming to grab you. <laughs> he's still living the dream. <laughs> afraid of getting grabbed. No kidding. Do you blame him? Where's the other one, uh, Iraq? Maybe it's this one. All right, hold on. We're gonna a couple more clips from Dave uh, Rabbit. During the night, we're going to be reading some of the things off of latrine walls around the Republic of Vietnam. (laughs) Here's one of them. While I'm home, my wife is my right hand. While I'm away, my right hand is my wife. (laughs) Cooking from the big 
69. The Who. From the rock opera Tommy. Pinball Wizard. Who's cooler than this fucking dude? No shit. It's unbelievable. Playing all new music oh, yeah. for the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this was like. No, it's the unbelievable. Who. Brand new from The Who. Yeah, he's. Cream. Cream. With white room. We're going to let this next one roll on through. Why? Well, for one reason, I've got to go take a big, heavy crap. <laughs> Boring, unforeseen incidences that may occur during my trip to the latrine, such as being picked up for marijuana, or stopping in and getting a quick fuck with one of the whores down the hall. I'll be back to finish this goddamn program. <laughs> Wow. He would have fit in with us, man. Yeah, and he's this goddamn program. And where's he working now? He's, uh, we don't is know. He, We're trying to find out more is about Is he just it. on the web doing it? He's I doing a podcast. Like, yeah, it's like a podcast. Wow. Uh, where's the yeah, one about the shit? Yeah, fucking want this guy on? Why, why <laughs> wasn't Satellite Radio hire him? Maybe it's the third Yeah. One. Fucking man, for a, a guy like that, it's just great. What am I talking about? Uh, <laughs> where is it? I'm boring myself. <laughs> I could have just stopped after why does the satellite hire him? Uh, <laughs> why did you? Why did you work as his manager? I just spiraled out of control. <laughs> yeah. I had nothing to say. He talks about the lifers. Oh, I think this is it yeah. right here. Okay, I love this one. Well, actually, we got. Let me play this one too because these are all unedited. Way better when you hear the curses. This motherfucker is so goddamn long. Oh. He got annoyed because he played a really long record. I don't recognize the song. So in the middle of it, he just pops the mic on. He's like, this motherfucking song is goddamn too long. This motherfucker is so goddamn long. I could have gone downstairs and got a shot of back. Rambling on with more music. By the way, my buddy Stork, who gave me the tape, he said that he said, uh, get a shot of Mac. Not back. Yeah. And it is a heroin uh, or a, a, a drug thing. So. That I didn't this know. This motherfucker is so goddamn long. I could have gone downstairs and got a shot of back. Rambling on with more music. Iron Butterfly. Soul Experience. Speed Kills. Slow down. Smoke grass. <laughs> Smoke grass. Just underground shit, man. Not that's, government radio. That's extraordinary. And that, that nobody. I, what's amazing is is that I am just hearing about it this morning. <laughs> yeah, I never heard of this guy. No, nope. never heard of him. No. Uh, and I, you know, and I had friends there. One more, uh, one more clip before we give you a couple new ones. This is, I think, the one we finally I love this about one. the shit. Iron butterfly, soul <laughs> experience. Lifers are like flies; they both eat shit and bother people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pete. <laughs> he's got his fucking high friend in the background, Lois. He goes, "You missed it." He goes, "Right on." Listen, That's listen to the background. You, Pete. Iron butterfly, soul experience. Lifers are like flies. <laughs> they both eat shit and bother people. Wow. Thank you, Pete. <laughs> Thank you, Pete. <laughs> what delivery this fucking guy dude has? He's great delivery. This, this, uh, yeah, this guy was having a ball. All right. And bother people. <laughs> and bother people. <laughs> finally, uh, bother me. Finally, new clips, because people have been with us all morning. These three clips are uh, for XM only, man. Talking about the hand jobs, the blow jobs. Here's more of uh, Dave Rabbit from 1970, 1971, when he was in Vietnam doing underground radio for everybody. Tonight's news comes from both Saigon and the Phan Rang areas. First off from Saigon, we find that the new massage houses recently opened up near the Korean tailor shop. <laughs> the following services are available. Steam bath, back massage, hand jobs, and blow jobs. <laughs> hours are from 0700 hours for maggots, 
7 a.m. for first-termers until 16.30 hours for maggots and 4.30 p.m. for first-termers. Reservations may be made by calling the extension 2269. Wow. And now from Fan Lang area, here's Nugent. Then the train flights have been reopened and have a new champagne flight that leaves Fan Lang at 8 a.m. It will operate on a first-come, first-go basis. The commander also recommends that you take an ample supply of rubbers as they have a shit pot full of new whores at the bars. <laughs> the commander's motto, a keep the morale pot. high on the base. And that's the news for this early edition. Wow. <laughs> Nick's news will be later on. Nick's local news will be later on, too. Good night, Nugent. Good night, Dave. And good night for this early edition of Radio First Termer News. Wow. A shit right at pot. right at it's the funny, end there man. um with the news he he cuts his signal so um every time he does the news thing he he goes right into static and then it, before it cuts out and goes dead why um he just I, I he only broadcasts for a certain amount of hours a day so i guess when he's he does the news is pretty much towards the end of his broadcast and then he just flips the switch and his signal goes dead wow Sounds like he did it today, yesterday. It sounds yeah, we got it's more nice. modern than what the shit we have to listen to now. Well, yeah. Then That's got, great. Then you got Howard saying he invented this whole thing. Obviously, this shit was being done a long time ago. <laughs> you got to acknowledge the people that came before you, man. Holy crap, this guy was uh, an original. Yeah. I wonder if he ever, ever had a real radio career after he got back from uh, the war. And I rocked him. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe yeah. he went by another name and was kind of doing <clears throat> more legit shit. I don't know. No, who would know is uh, uh, get uh, uh, stupid uh, uh, Abrams on the phone. Lee, you know Lee Abrams? Yeah, stupid Abrams. He bores us with his stories, but we'll we'll give it a shot today. <laughs> <laughs> but he does know his shit. He knows his shit. That's yeah. what I'm getting at. Like, he does know his shit. <laughs> yep. He just bores you. That's don't, don't all ask, he knows, though. Don't ask him about flying. Holy crap! <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Uh, here's uh, Dave Rabbit's philosophy, and he does theater listings. I can only imagine what movies oh, he's. Uh, uh, reviewing here. <laughs> Here's a Dave Rabbit philosophy. Pussy is the breakfast of champions. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's time to take a look and see what's happening at the Viking Theater at Fan Rang, the theaters at Saigon, the Trang, and the Cameron Bay area. Tonight, the movie is Lust, Sex, and Greed, starring Bridget Bardot, Samantha Abbott, Tim Conway, Jonathan Winters, and Hugo Montenegro. <laughs> the following night is Bambi, a Walt Disney production of A Little Deer and How He Got Shaft. <laughs> the next one is a fear and chills as the blood of Dracula rolls down on all the patrons. Here's a chance to really throw some money away. <laughs> uh, wow, my fucking favorite, this guy. This guy is great. Right on. <laughs> you want more or what? Yes. All right. Of course. Here's another quickie from the train. The carnial act of sex is held to be sacred. Eating pussy is perversion. Signed, Omar. Someone wrote under this. Is something happening here? Omar died from syphilis of the tongue and throat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, say good evening to Buffalo Springfield. Wow. Hey, that's a cool way to intro a record right there. That's pretty fucking cool, man. That's, this guy's amazing. Yeah. Fucking cool. You know what? Fuck it. We, let's play the rest of this shit. <laughs> it's really good. It really is. We got uh, we got just a few more. Um, we'll play the one from earlier, the public service announcement. They got fucking... Uh, it's hot. There's no clips of this guy anywhere? We're finding more. There's more online. Uh, E-Rock's going through it tonight. We should have more tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, only, only because I heard that like there's always like you can always get like his stuff in Albany on Friday night oh, at the Egg. Shit, Jimmy, I fell right mm. for it. What? Yeah, the I'm Egg in Albany. I'm a fucking rookie. <laughs> Man, it was and what night one. are they getting extras in? Yeah, really. Well, this Friday, apparently, they're giving a lot of them. Uh, oh, I happen good. to be there, uh, but it's irrelevant. You're gonna have copies of the Dave Rabbit tape for everybody. Oh yeah, for free and the T-shirt. Five one eight four seven three eighteen forty five. Forty five. Wow. Now people are calling. Uh, Look at my shirt. Uh, yeah, we got to get those shirts printed. My brother would, could probably rip them off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not give <getting> any money. <laughs> Long little grass now. 
Mark Going Dunst. back into music by Steppenwolf called The Pusher. Speaking of The Pusher, brothers and sisters, if you happen to be down by the Magic Finger Lounge any time tonight, keep away from the Korean at the front door. He's pushing some bad H. Wow. I repeat, he's pushing some bad H. Wow. Mm. It's, 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 it's stunning. And you figure, and then that's the, and he's the source of information. Well, well, they had the real information, and then you had no, this but, guy no, but that you was didn't like know, more of a street but guy. But it's also, it's that whole way, you know, back then of getting information, because uh, nobody, the, the, the real information, they're not going to tell you that the, right. uh, the, <laughs> the, H is the, bad. the H is bad. They don't, right. even, they don't even acknowledge that they're, they're they're gonna, their troops are doing H. Yeah, they're going to tell you, ah, avoid the fish, uh, you know, we got a bad, <laughs> bad shipment, not <laughs> avoid the H. And right. the cream sauce. <laughs> right, and the cream sauce, linger bee bit. <laughs> you got, you're getting your information from a guy who's, uh, who's, who's in the back of a whorehouse. That's yeah. where you got to get. That's. It's like nothing has changed in this country. Yeah, where's uh, they're getting their information from? You know, us, and, and we're like it, we're, we're like two steps don't away. Know anything? Where's Lee? <laughs> uh, Mike. Like, so yeah. they think we know because it comes out of their radio. But <laughs> I heard it. No, I heard it on the radio. Oh, then it must be true. No, yeah. we said it. Where's Lee Abrams? True. Steve left the voicemail for him. We're trying to get uh, trying to find him. Yeah, oh, he, well, he, oh, he's in an email somewhere. I, do you get the emails? <laughs> Uh, the, That's where he is. Yeah, I get the blogs. Are he you lives, friends with him or something? Well, because I did a, bu I did a bunch of stuff for XM back very in the early. Day, right? Back in the day. When there was uh, 100 people listening. When there was 60. <laughs> really. Sorry, but... Well, no, it's true. And then I got on and there was 102. Yeah. All right, we'll play more of this. Uh, you left a... I, I don't have his email address. My, my favorite is they gave on, me the uh, the XM box and all the stuff to, to actually uh, listen to you guys. Right. And it doesn't work. Well, don't say that, Lewis. We're trying to, you know. Well, it doesn't. We're trying to make people think that this is actually good. <laughs> it is good, but it doesn't work. <laughs> Whatever they gave me doesn't work. And then they told me it was because of where I was located. And I said, well, I thought a satellite can just get it to you. No, you need kind of line of sight. Cool. You know, it doesn't go through ceilings or anything. But I was like on the 40th floor. How much higher do I need to be? I'm like well, kissing the satellite's ass. <laughs> it's got to be like outside. The antenna. Could someone? Oh, well, then what are they giving it? To are us? you still in the same building on the west side? I moved, but I'm still in your neighborhood. In the, in the, you still in the neighborhood? No. All right, listen. you out. I moved to a richer one. Did you? Where are you living? Um, 145th Street in Edgecombe. <laughs> Edgecombe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, nice someone's got hood. Someone's got to Where turn this text thing off before I. Fuck. Uh oh. My love, what's the matter? Uh. Do you know how to turn the fuck in? They're they're trying to guess how uh, what you're thinking. Fucking Predictive text. text. Oh what? yes, I do. Get, uh, I, I'm ready to throw it. this. I love predictive. I'm text. trying to get stupid Lee Abrams on the goddamn radio All right, show. Let me see. Uh, do me a favor. Open up to the text page, and I'll show you how to do it. I don't know where that is. When you're going to send a text. Do you no, I text? mean an email. It's in the email. <laughs> Wow, this is this is radio at its most fascinating. Um, <laughs> All right, we got more how Dave do you Rabbit, text? Though. How do you text? We got more Dave Rabbit. If you no could call anywhere. in and help us learn how to text, <laughs> that would be really great for us. Give you a prize. Cutting edge radio. I don't know how to do this. Okay, give it to Danny. Danny will do it. <laughs> he tried all morning. Like the oh. stupid buttons started pushing themselves in my pocket. My penis oh. must have hit it. Or something. Oh yeah, oh. boy, that well, giant. Now, say yummy. I got a giant penis. Uh, uh, your big, of my penis. your big package. Well, it's not as big as Anthony's, but well. I do okay. <laughs> Suck this cock. Go. Are you packing, Lewis? I'm, I'm, not this morning. I think you're probably... I, Lewis, I leave Lewis, mine in the fridge. I say Lewis is probably five you don't and three have quarters. A, you don't have a six I'm thing. thinking. I'm thinking he's all ball. No. Yeah. One giant Old ball. Taffy bag. <laughs> <laughs> Old taffy bag. <laughs> like a hornet's nest. No, I have detachable. <laughs> I don't understand why you guys haven't moved to that. Detachable what? penises? Yeah. I leave it in the fridge. And I'll pick it up when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> now right. that it smells like the Chinese food you left next to it. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's go back to uh, Dave Rabbit. Oh, here. man. More Dave Rabbit. Here's another saying from the latrine walls. If you're sitting down taking a clap and reading this, you're probably the only motherfucker in the Republic of Vietnam that knows what he's doing. Here's one to cut your stereos full blast and blow that motherfucker out in the next room. <laughs> Hendrix. Fire. He's talking over the vocals, though. <laughs> he does not have a hit. Hendrix, post. fire. Well, first of all, that song's two minutes long, so maybe you should <laughs> just shut up on that one. 
Oh, sorry. He's a legend. I like him. <laughs> Hendrix. Oh. And now for a word from good old Pete. He's got some information for some of you people out there. Pete, what do you got for us tonight, buddy? Thank you, Dave. As it is our policy to keep our listeners well informed, we wow. have a special news item that should be a special interest for the patrons of the Castle Club this evening. We have just learned of an, M of an MP raid at 10 p.m., or I should say 10.30 p.m. tonight. So, if I were you, ditch the grass, H, speed, and make yourself plenty scarce. Thank you, Dave. Thank wow. you, Pete, for those wise words. And uh, I would take heed to what Pete says. He hangs around at all these joints out there, and he knows. He's the nose that knows if you can dig what I'm saying. I could dig it. Was anyone fighting over there? <laughs> they sound like yeah, they're right. having a great time. They're just man. hanging. Just hanging out in whorehouses, doing H, listening to Hendrix. That's that's not a bad life right there. He he had uh, some kind of connection where he, he would reveal where um, officers were maybe uh, dining out for the evening. And oh, uh, anytime right, the out. yeah, anytime the MPs uh, were going to set like a, a drug bust or a surprise inspection, uh, they'd get the information and start broadcasting right away, right as the MPs are heading to uh, wherever the troops are. Wow! All right, we got another clip. What warn the troops? Yeah, we got. Uh, oh, he does a dedication to the U.S. Army. I can only imagine what this <laughs> sounds like. God. Instant request line. Spencer Davis Group. I'm a man. This is a dedication to the United States Army. Army sucks. That was called in by General Creighton W. Ace. Oh, man. Holy shit. Called in by General Creighton. <laughs> <laughs> was he in the service? This guy? Yeah. I mean, or was he just, did he just show up? <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. was in there for a year and then uh, uh, was discharged or, or released because they, they screwed up his paperwork. So he was labeled as uh, something called a 1H, which he asked what was, and they said it's classified. We can't tell you. <laughs> classified. So he did a year and then was released, but decided to hang around and do this radio station. Oh, really? Yeah. That's amazing. Oh, so he was in Army when this was happening? No, he he'd already served his time. Oh, cool. All so right I couldn't buckle him. I bet you, I, I wonder if he's afraid of, um, of saying who he really is, because he's afraid that his Army pension or something will be affected, his military pension. Yeah. Here's another quickie from the latrine walls in the Republic of Vietnam. This joker writes, 18 days until I can go home to picket and protest this fucking waste of human lives that lifers and the government call a war. Hoss Cartwright is a fairy. <laughs> Signed, his mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> his, his mother. mother. <laughs> wow. He, like, just, he knows how to twist that shit, right? It's good. It's so solid. That's anti-military commie this guy was. No kidding, <laughs> man. Let's find him. Can you wait to play a clip? To. I gotta pee. Yeah, let's. Uh, we'll take a break. Yeah. So that's it for today. I, I think we did all our clips. We're, we're gonna try to find more, Iraq. Yeah. Good quality. See. All right. We'll hopefully have more tomorrow. We'll continue down this road with Dave Rabbit from the Big Six. I gotta track him down today. That's great. And the hits just keep on coming. Coming. Hendrix, I know he's singing, but uh, I'm high. <laughs> there's one other guy that's... I wonder what... You could have to ask Abrams, but there's a, there's a, another guy who had that kind of a voice. Yeah. Yeah, in the, in the 70s and... Um, yeah. Back, that that, I, I, that I, style. When I first started in... Um, I think I've told the story a couple of times, but when I first started in radio, I was just a schmuck. I was like the E-Rock back in the day. And, uh, and one of my jobs, I had to like find all these old uh, DJs from WCMF in Rochester. They were doing like their 20th anniversary or 25th anniversary or something like that. And I had to contact all these people. They knew where they lived, I guess. And they, uh, I, I had to try to get all their air checks. And they sent air checks. Every day I'm opening up my mail and finding like this, this amazing shit. And all these guys were just so fucking high, just babbling about nothing. <laughs> They're like they're talking about how they're just looking out the window and watching the snowfall. Like they were, they weren't giving you any info. They were just hanging in between the records. 
I, I think I got some of those uh, those tapes as well. I, I got to find them. But uh, Iraq uh, special guest tomorrow on the show. Uh, tomorrow, eight a.m. We will have Dave Rabbit on the phone. Ah. Yeah. how does he sound? I haven't talked to him yet. He, uh, he just sent me an email. Said, uh, "Yeah, he'll do the show tomorrow." And does, uh, does I he know? Send me info. Does he know that he's getting a lot of attention today? Mm -hmm. We I explained uh, how much time we dedicated to his material today, and uh, the guy's not very emotional about anything. So he's just like, I'll, I'll call tomorrow. Send me the information. I you said Same you delivery. Talk to him. Through the emails, I have to call him later. Well, how did gonna... you know he wasn't crying when he read it? Yeah. What are you, a fucking email psychologist? No, he's he's keeping. Uh... Do you look at the return path? <laughs> 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 we uh, we got more audio from Dave Rabbit. Oh. I was reading up on this guy yesterday, and uh, very interesting. You know, he only did twenty one shows. That's it. And, wow. And he's been alive ever since on the internet. People are just freaking out about this guy. He did an underground radio show in Vietnam back in 70, 71 from the back of a whorehouse. I read the whole story last <laughs> night. It's fascinating. And he was scared uh, S-less because he wasn't sure when he was going to get shut down. So you basically have a really, you have a clear copy of one of the of one of one 21 shows. Yes. Wow. Yeah. This is really right. Yeah, and uh, and item. he had a lot of shows himself, but his, uh, his daughter, I guess, uh, taped over him. Because she wanted some music back in the eighties. Well, and that's what you did. You would, you know, find cassettes and just put music on them. Yeah. And she found his very valuable radio shows mm. and recorded over them. Oh. So, oh. very fascinating guy. But we definitely have more audio from him. Maybe we'll uh, start that after the break. Okay. Uh, he's, I, I thought about him yesterday. I, I can't. I was trying to tell my girlfriend um, about him, Choker, and um, <laughs> you can't translate like how great this guy is. Because I'm like, yeah, he did shows in Vietnam. Really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's like I can't explain what makes him so good. Yeah. It's it's a, the, a whole combination of uh, knowing the situation he was in at the time, the voice, yeah. and the material's funny. The guy actually has funny lines, you know? Well, here's a taste from yesterday. Uh, we got new stuff for later on, but uh, just in case you missed it yesterday, Dave Rabbit, Underground Radio, Vietnam, 1970. Good evening again, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host for the next three hours of hard acid rock music, Dave Rabbit. For those of you who have just recently come into the Republic of Vietnam, I'd like to give you a little information about it so your mind won't be quite so blown when you hear such words as and words of that nature. We're an underground radio station here, and we say what we feel like saying, and we bring the truth to the first termers in the Republic of Vietnam. We also bring you hard acid rock music all through the night. The up to date music of today's American youth. As he's playing Santana in the back, up to date, yeah. which was a brand new song, I guess. Vietnam. <laughs> I love what he says Vietnam. Yeah. Vietnam. 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 He basically didn't want to go home. The Republic of Vietnam. He didn't want to go home. He was in the Air Force. He did a little time, and uh, they were going to like uh, station him back in the States uh, yeah. doing some mundane job, and he said, screw that. I want to stay in Vietnam, and he did. He was able to do that, if, I think, for a couple of years, hmm. and then he did this underground radio show, did 21 of them. And then that was it. I, I don't even know why he was shut down. Uh, they, they don't explain the uh, explain that on the internet. So we'll find out today because we're going to talk so to cool, Dave man. Rabbit. We found this guy during the night. We're going to be reading some of the things off the latrine walls around the Republic of Vietnam. <laughs> Here's <laughs> one of them. While I'm home, my wife is my right hand. While I'm away, my right hand is my wife. Cook it. From the big <laughs> The Who. From the rock opera Tommy. Pinball Wizard. Wow, how cool is that? That was pretty how new. How cool is that? <laughs> yeah, right. Pretty new. What timing he has, too, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he, was, he just had it, man. Uh, we'll be talking to Dave Rabbit a little later this morning. The Vietnam dude. Yeah. That, that went underground and did a radio show for like 21 days. Just didn't know when he was going to be shut off. Like and that guy his own show. Kind of bummed that he never did radio after that. Yeah. It seemed like he just kind of wandered around. Good voice, good delivery. Yeah. He was probably, I don't know, we'll ask him, but it sounds like he was a little left up. A little <laughs> bit. Know? Sounded like he was on the H or something. Yeah. Uh, 
Well, now that I mentioned him, I got to play another clip from yesterday. We got new ones for today, by the way, but uh, just in case you missed it, uh, Dave Rabbit, 1970 71, Vietnam, Underground Radio. Cream with white room. We're going to let this next one roll on through. Why? Well, for one reason, I've got to go take a big, heavy. <laughs> And boring, unforeseen incidences that may occur during my trip to the latrine, such as being picked up for marijuana, or stopping in and getting a quick f- with one of the whores down the hall. I'll be back to finish this goddamn program. <laughs> program. I would listen to this guy every day. Yeah. Every day. There's one where he plays... Uh, it, uh, 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 what? Uh, 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 like there was one. He has a really what? cool intro on. It. Uh, uh, what? I don't know. It might be a cream song. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> Jimmy! I got forty clips in front of me. I, I need know. a little more info than that. Did you just say White Room? Yeah, but he just said White Room, right? Or yeah. Not? Listen to this show tonight no, because was, um, we're all out of sorts. My back is uh, killing me, Jimmy. I don't know what the hell's going on. Is that White Room or no? Uh, that uh uh, uh, uh I, I, no that's that's white room. I think this is the intro to this is cool that he does on the big sixty nine, and the hits just keep on coming. All right, and we'll have you rock figure it out. I don't know. <laughs> Someone is suggesting you do Dave Rabbit as the pilot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, almost. I'm hey. gonna be taking a nap now. The Republic of Vietnam. Vietnam, I, I love the way he says Vietnam. Vietnam. He does have a Rod Serling thing to his voice. This guy's the greatest, man. He rules. Mm. <sighs> he uh, he certainly does, Jimmy. He if, certainly. Does. If I could say Vietnam the way he says it, I'd find a reason to say it every twenty minutes <laughs> <laughs> in daily yeah. conversation. Cactus, you can't judge a book by looking at his cover. Here's another quickie from the latrines in the Republic of Vietnam. This guy writes, fighting for someone else's freedom is like f***ing for someone else's virginity. Power. He doesn't care the guy's singing. No. Why would he care? <laughs> he said blank power. L- ladies. Ladies. You got that part. Mm-hmm. Ladies. But he used to take another clip of Dave Rabbit before we get into the uh, the chicken story. This is so goddamn long. Yeah, he had a problem with this uh, record he was playing. He played uh, some real long song. He sounds very stoned. Yeah, and in the middle of it, he's just pissed that the song is going on forever because he only did a three hour show, so he had a break in. This is so goddamn long. I could have gone downstairs and got a shot of back. <laughs> Rambling on with more music. Iron Butterfly. Soul Experience. Speed Kills. Slow Down. Slow Down. Smoke Grass. <laughs> Smoke grass. Underground radio from yeah. Vietnam, man. This is uh it's a shame he only did twenty one shows. Know. God. This is the one uh, Jimmy really likes. It's really quick. Iron butterfly. Soul experience. Lifers are like flies. They both eat <laughs> and bother people. Right <laughs> on. Thank you, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pete. That's my favorite part. Thank you, Pete. Yes. Yeah. They're just having a good old time. Uh, this next story is no big deal, but it just reminded it probably, me. It, it probably ended up being Pete from NEW. Oh, <laughs> uh, Pete, Pete Johnson. Tell. Pete Johnson. Oh, Pete Johnson. It, the, thank you, Pete. No problem. We're being shot at. Where's my chin dildo? Lily. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might have had an engineer that that started with Marconi <laughs> put on a chin dildo one time. Yeah, he didn't want to, but we made him. He didn't want to. No. And, uh, yeah. All right, anyway. Lovely lady. Story for another day. All right, listen, you want to hear more Dave Rabbit or what? His show is called uh, Radio First Termer. (laughs) Underground Radio from 1970, Vietnam. In Saigon, by the way, right? Mm -hmm. Broadcasted from a whorehouse. Mm. 
in Saigon. Well, swingers, it's that time again for Pete and myself. No, not the end of the program. But both of us are getting kind of horny and uh, kind of hungry at that. So we're going to go down the hall and give us a big, juicy burger. So, uh, as we go down and have a quick bite to eat, a box lunch or something, we'll be back for another hour and a half of hard acid rock music. We're now going to return you to the regular crappy programming of the American Forces <laughs> Vietnamese Network. Regular crappy programming. Regular crappy programming. That one was a bit hard to hear, but he uh, he wanted to have a blank burger. Remember, yeah. Turkey, uh, okay. broadcasting from a whorehouse, so you figure it out. Wait. Yeah. Uh, all, all you have to know. Eric Flowers. Thank you, Alex, from Buffalo. All you have to know. Eric killers. To Such see, because he seems to like this word, but it's very hard to convey to people. Yeah. Think of a defunct airline, not Pan Am, the other one, and then just add another letter to the end of it. <laughs> well, you wow. Could, you could say add a T to the end of it. Yeah. Well, That's yeah. That's not going to mess As long up. as you don't bring up the airline. Eastern right. Airlines? No. <laughs> Actually, you could say, you could say Trans World Airlines, because that's sure. what it was. Right. Uh, so he he seems to really like that word and uses it a lot. Boy, it's not pan amped. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on now. Hold on. <laughs> Value jet. <laughs> no, I didn't sing for three dog night. <laughs> <laughs> what a fool believes. <laughs> you. I'm not going to sing one is the loneliest number. <laughs> Something's going on. Jack Jack's missing. No nail clipper and soap walking off. It, uh, it, hap gonna, it happens. I'm going to figure out this puzzle. That's, hey, uh, it happens. Bugging me. Let's yeah. get another clip in here. From the gigantic 69, Vietnam's only psychedelic FM stereo multiplex station, James Gang, STOP, which can mean... Stop or stay tax on <laughs> state tax on and he's in a whorehouse. So. Yeah, uh, well, you course. can figure out the P and yep. this guy had it all figured <laughs> out, man. He knew exactly what was going on in that country. Wow. Oh, I didn't even hear that. Scott from Rochester writes the best line was update. Uh, he's going to get a, a a box lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Song complaints, yeah. drug raid, lookout, uh, and then he complains again. Dave Rabbit from 1970, Underground Radio in Vietnam. It's going to be on the show hopefully in a half hour. If you think you've heard long endings before, you must not have gotten this album. This bastard lasts three minutes long. If you can dig it. Here's a special message for all you people out there that are going downtown. Oh, you are already downtown already. The word is that the OSI is out there heavy tonight. So, you worshippers of speed and the weed, be sure and take care. We don't need any of our brothers or sisters in jail. That was a little special, by the way. Just brought in from the hot little hands of my studio engineer, Pete, baby. He's going back out now again to see if he can dig up some more on the scene spots that we can give to you. I know that you're all really interested in some of this crap that we're reading out tonight, but it may save a couple of you, and if we can save a couple, then our purpose has been fulfilled. Oh, wow. <laughs> Isn't this a groovy ending, though? Really? These are the only as I know that can play four chords and make it last five minutes. <laughs> He's disgusted. Who is the band? Yeah, what was the band? Yeah, what the hell was that? 
I don't know which song that was. I didn't recognize it. Uh, what was the deal there? He just was bothered by the fact that it was going on forever? Yeah, he, he wanted to talk again, and the song just kept going and going. Um, I don't know if, if it came through, but at the beginning, you hear the mic come on, and he just goes... <sighs> He's so uh, disgusting. Just annoying. Really. I love the fact that he didn't like that crap that a lot of people did back then. The whole, you know, the, just jamming for an hour at the end of a song. Good. Good for him. Yeah. He likes the hits, and then he likes talking. Well, uh, we have uh, the last part of that bit because he he's still pissed that the, uh, the song is going on, right? Yeah. Have you ever heard a longer... Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is a classic. Uh, yeah, 69 was used in his channel ID. I know. The yeah. Big 69. That was the frequency he picked. He could have picked anything because he went underground. He's oh, wild with that one. Oh, yeah. All right. Hey, uh, more Dave Rabbit as we go on a break because we're, we're getting ready for the big interview with this guy. Yeah. This, uh, I guess he's kind of a legend. I don't know. I don't know what he is. He's very mysterious, right, E Rock? Mysterious. E Rock was talking to the guy and he didn't even want to admit that he was the guy for a while. He really? Very, What's he doing? A bit of paranoia. What? What? What was going on, E Rock? I guess he, he, um, there's a lot of people trying to track down who the, the real guy is, and uh, the guy just values his privacy. He didn't want to to admit, uh, admit to a lot of things. So it's you know, a as you're talking, head. I'd like to throw a fastball at your glasses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and E-Rock just goes, of course. Well, he's right, but it was only because he was stammering through that very... Yeah. Sorry, Eric. All right, well, we're going to talk to him. He did uh, underground radio in Vietnam, <laughs> Saigon. He only did 21 shows. Because, That's it. Because they were chasing him. They were trying to figure out where this guy was broadcasting from, and uh turned out he was broadcasting from a whorehouse. He rented one of the rooms that... Uh, <laughs> They needed. <laughs> and they couldn't even find him? Were they looking for him? Is that the problem? What I read, man, every every day he was paranoid that he was going to get caught. Wow. So he was scared. And well, there's then, so many whorehouses there, too, in Vietnam. It's probably hard to find one and, whorehouse. Right. Probably three or four. Perhaps more than that, uh, Ant. And he, and he had to get the, uh, the word out the that he was doing this underground radio because they had the, uh, what was it called? The army, you know, the government radio that they set up for the guys. What was yeah. it called again? The Armed Forces, Armed Forces, uh, Armed Vietnam Forces. Network. which is like crap. You know? Yeah, uh, yeah, they they kind of buy the book, uh, by the radio, book, radio, yeah. But and a lot of the guys knew it was crap, so they they figured out how to break into that broadcast. So this guy could say, "Look, uh, starting in a few minutes, I'm, yeah. I'm going to be doing this crazy show on uh, pirated uh, it, yeah, yeah, on 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 the frequency 69." <laughs> and that's how it started. And then it just kind of blew up. For a quick, a short amount of time, 21, mm -hmm. 21 days, and that was it. Then done. And then he just disappeared. Yeah. And he had something. He should have been doing radio all along. Yep. Here's another clip from his underground radio show. Here's another Dave Rabbit philosophy. Candy is sweet, but <laughs> won't rot your teeth. <laughs> I'm not saying Vietnamese <laughs> that is. American <laughs> won't rot your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Words to live by, Lloyd. Words to live by. And then he's got a hitchhiker commercial here. And now here's one of our most requested commercials. Our hitchhiker commercial. Listen closely and take heed. Say, do you have advantage of a Jeep pickup or a deuce and a half? No. Do you get to drive where you want to go? No. Well, here's something to think about. <laughs> okay. Have you ever seen some troop trudging along the roadside and thought about giving him a lift? Many times. Don't. Why? Instead, run the son of a bitch over. Yeah. I mean, after all, what are they going to do? Send you to Vietnam? Ha <laughs> ha. Fooled you, sister. They already did. Ha <laughs> ha. Right on, as Pete would say. Oh, wow. <laughs> right on, as Pete would say. All right, let's be honest. This guy's smooth. Just like our show, not every bit's going to work for Dave. Uh, that, no. that one fell a little, a little short. Kind of like that whole run him over with the Jeep, though. That's, uh, yeah. that's nice. Today, the base exchange has received a new shipment of items to really blow your mind. 
Mr. Popeye told us today uh. that the BX now has in stock the following non-rationed items. For all you swinging first-termers here in the Republic of Vietnam. This is a f***ing joke. What? LSD, marijuana, goofballs, red eyes, glass, incense. And for those of you who are just starting out, airplane glue. Yes, take advantage of the big savings at the BX. Yeah. All these fantastic new items. Stock up now and avoid the rush. Right. Remember, the, the money you spend at the BX is eventually returned to you in other fun, fun ways. Huh? It's a f***ing joke. Wow, really. <laughs> <laughs> How wasted was this guy? You know, Vietnam sounded fun. Yeah. They yeah. made Vietnam sound fun. Yeah. Huh. Well, that was his goal. He was trying to, you know, get a laugh uh, going for the guy. Get a little laugh. As they were scared s out there in the jungle. bouncing Betty removes your manhood. <laughs> Looking for Charlie. Wonderful. Would yeah. you? Oh, yeah. What's it bouncing Betty? Uh, it's a little, it's a, a landmine you, that you would step on, mm -hmm. and a small charge would go, boonk. And uh, fire an explosive up just at groin level, where it would explode and remove your manhood. There were there guys that lost their general. Oh yeah, yeah, plenty. Really? Their their strategy was uh, with mines was more to wound the soldier than to kill them because uh, a wounded soldier takes out um, at least three guys because you need two guys to carry back the uh, wounded soldier. Wow. So instead of killing them which would take out the one guy, they, they would wound him in horrible fashion like that. And uh, It's also just, more demoralizing when you see people alive with no legs and missing yeah, yeah. penis. I mean, that, that, it, dead is dead. Uh, yep. I, I caught one. But, I mean, it sucks, but to have a guy alive and see him living like yeah. that, or, you know, using a bag because he's been blown apart. Yep. Yeah. That's oh. pretty bad. Mm. One more clip before break. And here's a dedication to the lifers around the Republic of Vietnam who during the day act establishment and at night turn into swingers. Purple Haze, Jimi Hendrix. Ah! <laughs> 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 All right, we're going to be talking to Dave Rabbit hopefully right after the break. So yeah. getting ready to uh, talk to Dave Rabbit Good. about his underground radio show that he did in Vietnam for 21 days. Man. People are talking about it 40 years later. Yeah. Amazing. 38 years later, whatever. He's around 60 years old now. Is he Is he crazy? I don't know. We're going to find out. Like, um, I don't know. Senile. Remember? <laughs> Remember when we talked to the guy that did the cartoon voices? Oh, God. We were all psyched and everything, and he turned out to be a nut. Not a nut. He was, uh, he was I senile. Think he, I think he was suffering he from was senile. Great. What was his name again? Uh, Don, uh, Don, 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 something. Messick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He Don Messick. He the voice of Ricochet Rabbit. The and voice of every band, cartoon band, character. All the Hanna-Barbera cartoons. And Anthony being, a, you know, really into voices and oh, stuff, we and, thought and this would be a treat. Cartoons. <laughs> and we're, we're saying how great he is, and he's going, y y you mean yeah. me? <laughs> yes. You mean, you mean me? Uh, I, <laughs> we'll have to play that at a later, yeah, a later date. Someone remind us of that one. But I, I hope this guy's of sound mind. I think he is. All right, I got to interrupt this because we got yeah. Dave Rabbit on the phone. Uh, Dave, yeah, welcome to there the Opie and Anthony Show. How are you, sir? Hey, brothers, what's happening? Well, we've been having a lot of fun playing some clips from your uh, underground radio show from 1970, Saigon, Vietnam. I love it, brother. I love it. Yeah. And um, I got to tell you, um, I, I, I started radio in college, and I was in a fraternity, and this guy Stork and this guy, I think uh, Joe also had it, or I think we might have got it from Joe, uh, had this tape of you doing, um, doing uh, First Termer. The first, it was called First Termer, right? Yeah, Radio First Termer. Uh -huh. And we were amazed by this cassette, and no one knew anything about you. No one knew anything about the show. And uh, we would listen to it every once in a while. And then I, I got a copy of it. I just threw it in a box. And uh, I don't know, 15, 20 years go, you know, go by. And all of a sudden, I'm unloading my uh, apartment. And I find this thing. And I'm like, oh, my God. I used to love this tape. And I brought it on the uh, into the show. And uh, we've been playing it and just freaking out about it. 
Yeah, E Rock sent me a copy of the the show yesterday. I, I wasn't available to listen to it, but yeah, you guys you guys rock and roll, brother. You really do. Well, you you had uh, quite the show back then. I mean, um, what was it? Were you were you a pirate station? Were you uh, taking over a signal? How did it actually work? Well, actually, I mean, Reader's Digest version. It, it actually started when I was on my second tour in Fan Rang. I was associated with a legal AFVN. Uh, radio station called Radio Fan Ring, and my my roommate Jim Brookshire is the one that got me involved as his studio engineer. And as it turned out, when I uh, left that assignment to go to Saigon, uh, we had a rocket attack that morning that I was leaving to go back home on the R and R, and um, a rocket landed in our room, killed Jim. Wow! And oh, you know, if I had been laying there, I'd been dead too. So. It, it really rocked me to my roots because this was just a, a, a generous, sweet, loving guy that would have, you know, done anything for anybody in humanity. And it was a senseless war to begin with. And the fact that he was taken uh, angered me mm. tremendously. So when we got to Saigon, uh, my mission was to do something that AFN was never going to do or Stars and Stripes, and that was to bring... Uh, rock and roll to the troops on the front lines. And I'm talking the Army Marines, the guys that were every day lugging through the, you know, all the swamp and the, the forest and the trees and all that. Mm. And, uh, and then that's what we did. And, you know, it took us two months in pre production just to get everything together to where we could even get on air. So you decided you couldn't go onto a real, ra like a regular radio station. How did you decide where to broadcast from? I mean, this was done basically from a whorehouse, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, Pete, Pete Sadler, not his real name, uh, was a frequent flyer at uh, Madame Ho's. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so anyway, uh, he says, uh, I said, we, we need a place. And we couldn't do it on the base, obviously. I mean, that would have a little been a, a little no-brainer. So he says, well, yeah, let's go down to Madame Ho's. And I said, okay, sure, you know. And we met Madame Ho and... Um, Offered her, uh, gave her, gave her one of those, uh, uh, Vito Corleone things, you know, an offer she couldn't refuse. Which basically was, she got to keep the mattresses and all the equipment when we got through. Wow. Kind of barter situation, you know. Well, they set and, up the uh, studio uh, by, uh, I should just jump in real fast. They set up the studio by lining the, the room with mattresses and, uh, and stuff right, to yeah. keep out the outside noises, keep out the moaning that is going on down the hall. <laughs> there right. was a lot of that too, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Man, so you you set up in this whorehouse, and how long did you have? Did you actually do the show for? Uh, we only we lasted twenty one days, and uh, mainly because we we didn't want to go to Long Bin, which was the prison in, in Vietnam. <laughs> uh, they were really after us. The base commander, I don't know whether you played that little uh, snippet yet, but uh, the base commander was not a big fan of Radio First Trimmer or Dave Rabbit. <laughs> uh, he, he made it a vow to find me and and uh, you know toss my rabbit buttocks into the prison system. And uh, I just, you know, there was something about the prison life that just didn't appeal to me. So uh, uh, even though we had military police and officers and, and lifers uh, that were actually protecting us, you know, we had we had to shut it down. It was just no way we could have uh, continued on more than 21 days. And so we, we demolished everything. Uh, you know, it, we gave the equipment to, the, to Madam Ho, and then we got rid of everything, uh, burned everything. Uh, where there was no trace that connected us to the show, and and we walked out the back door of Madame Ho's house, and um, you know, and never looked back. Yeah, you were you were saying some ballsy stuff uh, for back then, and for uh, being in the military, especially, and and broadcasting to the military. I'm sure they didn't really enjoy some of the stuff you were saying about the uh, lifers and the brass and and whatnot. Well, you know, I mean, the officers, I mean, there was, there was always a percentage of them that couldn't take a joke, uh, as, as well as the lifers, but you would be real surprised how many huge fans we had that were in the officer ranks as well as <laughs> the uh, um, top military ranks of this, you know, the, the regular stripers. So you did this radio show for three weeks, and, and were you surprised that the tapes had gone out all over the world? I tell you what really blew me away. I mean, as I say, we walked out on the 21st of January of 71 and, and never looked back. In the summer of 1982, I'm at a party here in Dallas, and I'm talking to this guy, and, and we're just, you know, shooting the breeze, and it turns out he was uh, in the Army in Germany. We spot in Germany. 
And he said, well, what did you do? I said, I was in Vietnam. He said, hey, did you ever hear of Dave Rabbit? I said, uh, yeah. And he goes, uh, well, man, he says, uh, that guy really ruled. Did you listen to him live? I said, yeah, I really did. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and then one thing led to another, and, and I said, well, you're not going to believe this, but I'm Dave Rabbit. And he goes, no, nah, you're not Dave Rabbit. And so I did, you know, uh, I remembered a couple of the bits, you know, uh, about the the toothpick in the toilet and the crabs pole vaulting and stuff. And, <laughs> and so I kind of I kind of did that. And he says, oh, my God. And he, I, I mean, he actually hits the floor and starts bowing down to me. And I'm going, what is all this about? He says, man, he says, you're, you're a legend in Germany. I'm going, how am I a legend in Germany? Because I'm thinking, you know, the, sh the last show we did was the 21st of January, 71. This is 82. How can I be a legend in Germany? And then that's when I found out that somebody recorded one of the shows. And I have a good idea that it was the radio relay guys that were uh, bumping our signal throughout uh, Cambodia, Laos, and in uh, wow. Southeast Asia. All illegally, and, uh, by the way. Yeah, that on, that on took the balls on the their part. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so that, and that's when I first found out that a show existed. And, and you know, February 9th, 2006, I get on the Internet. The kids want to know stuff about uh, Vietnam, and I'm... You know, Googling, which I never do. I hate to Google. Well, occasionally on Friday nights I like Googling, but only if I have a bar of soap. Anyway, <laughs> so what happens is is that I get on the Internet, and I find this, uh, this site that says audio clips from Vietnam. And I'm thinking, okay, cool. And I see when it says Radio First Terminal. Well, I click on it, then I find Will Snyder's site, who created the original Dave Rabbit Home, and uh, get on that and see that he has these clips. And then I start Googling and find AboveTopSecret.com, which is my family right now that I have with the ATS Mix show. And uh, and then one thing leads to another. And it, it's just been a crazy, crazy ride. It really has. Yeah, because, I mean, when I found out you only did 21 shows, that amazed me. Obviously, the people that taped these things thought they were, it was so unusual and so different and so cool that they obviously wanted to trade them and, and, and give them to other people. And then that's where this whole thing grew. Because no one gets popular from doing 21 radio shows. No one. <laughs> well, uh, I did. No, no, I understand that. But, but I, I, that, that means live. Like it's all, Dave, like, that, uh, oh, yeah. Dave, that was actually a compliment. Like No one oh, just does 21 shows and that's it. I mean, you obviously had something. You, you, were basically, you basically had the voice of the soldiers. That's why they could relate to you. And uh, and that's why this thing become a, becomes a phenomenon because they're like, wow, you got to hear this tape. We all remember when we were a lot younger, if we heard something really cool, you could say jerky boys or whatever. You wanted to pass this uh, this tape on to others. And that's uh, that's how this whole thing ended up uh, just becoming huge. Yeah, and it's one of those things to where, you know, you get something, you pass it on to a buddy and kind of thing. And, and, and that's really how it grew. I mean... I mean, conservatively, we have 23 million military and civilian fans worldwide right now. I mean, strictly from, you know, them finding the Internet, they finding the, the stuff on the websites and stuff, and, uh, and strictly, you know, passing it on to somebody. That, and it, it, it gives you a great idea of how grassroots movements can really be a very effective. Right. What did, oh, okay. what, did, what did you do when you came back from Vietnam? What, what happened with your life? What, did you do radio? Did you pursue it at all? No, and, 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 and here's the weird thing. I came back home. My family had a business here in Dallas. My dad and mom were not of the best health, and so I took that over and, and kind of put my radio career on hold. And then when I uh, got involved with AboveTopSecret.com and my uh, my partners, Simon Gray, Mark Allen, Stephen Melzer, Bill Irwin, and, of course, my partner, Johnny Anonymous, we started this uh, the ATS Next Show about eight months ago. And started doing a podcast, and then you know one thing led to another, and the show got real popular, and we got huge fan base going, and and now as I told E Rock uh, yesterday, uh, we're on the verge of going uh, nationwide syndication in the next three or four months. So it's a, it's a pretty amazing ride. Thirty seven years later, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So you walk away from radio thirty seven years ago, which uh, obviously you had the passion to do it. That's that had to kill you, and you only got back into it eight months ago. Well, actually, yeah, I started. Yeah, we started the show eight months ago, right? And you didn't do any radio in between for the most part. No. Oh no. my God, that's amazing. What kind of work did you do? Uh, well, I, I, you know, I don't want to tell too much about that because everybody will be going on the doors. Uh, I sold my business actually uh, last May uh, and decided to do this full time, and uh, 
And that's oh. kind of, I, I took a leap of faith. I figured, you know, if, if I'm going to do this at 59, boys, I know you were using your calculator trying to figure out how old I am. Yeah. But, it, but at 59, you know, I figured, you know, if, I, if I'm going to do it, I got to go do it now. So I sold my business and, and really turned my back. But basically, to answer your question, it, it was just a, a business that uh, uh, was in marketing. I was in marketing to, in, in a general degree. Have you had your? Uh, have you kept your identity private for all these years about who Dave, your Dave Rabbit's real name? Oh yeah. In fact, uh, when I went to AboveTopSecret dot com originally, uh, when I googled it, and I thought, what the heck is AboveTopSecret dot com? And I click, and this guy by the name of John Jeremiah, and his post is still there on the site. He he thinks I'm a conspiracy theory of the government, and that the <sighs> United States government put me in Saigon to, you know, for some kind of war effort kind of thing. And I'm thinking, this is nuts. This is crazy. And uh, from that, you know, a, a love affair began between me and AboveTopSecret.com because you know, I lovingly call it Disneyland for nuts. But, boy, it's, it's just so much more than that, you know. Yeah, it looked like you guys were having a great time. Why would you, why, why do you keep it, uh, why do you not want to reveal who you are? Well, uh, well, one reason is that you know my wife Bunny and my my son Jack and and Peter and, and of course uh, Babs and Bugs, uh, you know, uh, it, it's amazing how many people will, will, you know will see me on the street and, and they don't have a clue who I am. See, I like going in my life in stealth mode. I kind of like mean, I kind of like that. I don't know who you really are. Well, you know, I mean, that's the mis that's the mystique about it. If everybody knew, you know, that that you know, I'm I'm really uh, you know. George Stephanopoulos with ABC Radio, I mean, that would really <laughs> blow the whole thing, you know? I mean, they just couldn't identify with that. It's actually Rush Limbaugh's uh, alter ego. <laughs> I uh, love that. And so you're doing the show every night with your pals and yeah. stuff, and uh, yeah. every day you're, you're thinking this is going to be the last show. There's no way I could keep this going, right? Oh, well, you know, every day was a gamble. I mean, it really was, because, I mean, they were trying to find us with triangulations and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> And it was really impossible for them to do it because of the radio relay guys. I mean, we were on three hours only, you know, during that window of opportunity. So, I mean, they tried. I mean, they tried real hard. But here, here's why we stopped. The military police, the OSI, Office of Special Investigation, the military, these guys, a lot of them were our friends. They knew about us. They were encouraging the show to, uh, you know, get on the air. So when they got to a point to where their supervisors were saying, look, there's no reason in the world that you're not finding these guys unless you're implicated with him. And they started getting a lot of pressure. And, and I'll never forget it as long as I live. Uh, a very good friend of mine in the OSI office comes up to me and says, Dave, you got to stop. He says, because if you don't, we're all going to go down. And I said, okay, that's it. And that's when we stopped. So they protected you for as long as they could until yep. it was obvious they were protecting you. Yep. Yeah. Wow, that's an amazing story. And you come back and you live your life. You go 37 years and you start up again. And uh, did you know that there were so many recordings of your show floating around, like like different shows, or did you only have one copy yourself? Well, you know, we we found a reel to reel that was uh, some trooper found in his. It's kind of it's kind of like Opie found in his uh, little box and stuff. Uh, this guy had a reel to reel. He had an <laughs> old PX. And we basically paid him money to transfer it into a digital format for him. Wow. And the the ones that we have right now on the Dave Rabbit site, uh, the pod site, which is uh, DaveRabbit.Podomatic.com, has the 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 remastered version of the entire show. And plus, we've got you know the Iraq show, which I did as a uh, 35th anniversary with a new team. Um, but yeah, we've got there's over 500 bits of Dave Rabbit stuff on that site because I can't put everything on AboveTopSecret.com because we're G rated. Right. Know. Yeah, right. We're a, fam we're a family site. I can't put a lot of the Dave Rabbit material there. So, but, uh, you know, those guys that really like that kind of stuff, there's a ton of it on the DaveRabbit.Podomatic.com wh site. What are you uh, doing now as far as uh, your podcast? What kind of a uh, show you're doing? Well, we, you know, it's about what we are, which is our ecosystem that, that was created by the genius Simon Gray, who was the founder of AboveTopSecret.com. We lovingly call them the Three Amigos. And uh, basically, it's about alternative subjects, such as conspiracy theories, 9-11 conspiracy theories, UFOs, aliens. Uh, I mean, just anything that you can imagine that would be a topic of conspiracy or whatever would be what we're talking about. I mean, they have weaponry, resources and uploads, 
uh, really above top secret, secret societies. Uh, it's just a, 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 a smorgasbord, if you will, of every alternative topic you can possibly think of. Is it America. kind of like, I'm sorry to interrupt, Dave, is it kind of like a coast-to-coast, like Art Bell's type subject? No, and I'll, and I'll tell you why. Because uh, in my respects to uh, George and Art Bell and those guys over at Coast to Coast, but what we do is we take the same subjects, but instead of being there like uh, uh, two squirrels going 69, which is exciting for a few minutes, and then it kind of loses its uh, appeal, uh, we put levity and humor and, and put uh, a lot more at ease with our guests. And, and it, we just have a good time. It, we, we rock and roll. When we get with our, our people, we rock. We give them a little taste of Dave Rabbit but on a FCC-compliant basis, if you know what I mean. Hmm, very nice. Well, Dave, we uh, definitely have to take a break here. Um, uh, this was a pleasure, though. It's great we, talking to you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I have to tell you guys, you guys were an inspiration. Uh, we just donated $25,000 to the Girl Scout organization for their new drive to um, sell garlic butter sauce. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you do a little Dave Rabbit as we go to break here, or what? Oh, sure, yeah. You want to just to do a, a typical outro here? Yeah, yeah, sure. All right, listen, on behalf of the Opie and Anthony Show here in New York City, this is Dave Rabbit. Peace. All right, thank you, Dave. Thanks, Dave. We'll Good be, luck, buddy. We'll be in touch, all right? All right, brother. All right all there right. he goes, Dave Rabbit. Take care. Guy's a 21-day legend. Yeah, it's amazing, <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying. And it lasted that long. Yeah. Cool story. Absolutely. Uh, why don't we go back in time? Uh, Dave Rabbit. Vietnam, 1970, doing the underground radio show that we just discussed for the last uh, few minutes. Good evening. This is Air Force Sergeant Dave Rabbit. And this is Nugent. With tonight's news. In Washington today, President Nixon was officially charged in connection with the My Lai Massacre. Although the president was nowhere near Vietnam at the time, higher-ranking officials are positive that there is some connection. What, however, they aren't sure of. No comment from the president was available. Nugent. In Alabama, Governor George Wallace is announced as his running mate for the presidential election as H. Rapp Brown. Rapp was not available for comment, but his associates say it's the happiest day of his life. A blissful event has occurred for Tiny Tim and his wife, 19-year-old Miss Vicky. They have announced the coming birth of their first child. When asked about the nervous tension and stress of having a first child, Tiny Tim stated that he's sure he'll have no problem giving birth the first time. He also stated that the baby will be breastfed. Miss Vicky also said that Tiny will have to have his chest shaved so the baby won't gag on the hairs. Finally in the news, <laughs> Lyndon Johnson was arrested in his Texas home for indecent public exposure after he led a group of Vietnam protesters down Main Street. Johnson was also cited on ten counts of public vulgarity and one count for shooting the finger at an Air Force officer. Preliminary hearing dates have not been set yet. And that's the news. This is Air Force Sergeant Dave Rabbit. And Nugent. Wishing you a very good evening. The voice of news, information, and hard acid rock music. This is Radio First Termer at 69 megacycles on your FM dial. Wow. They're little pieces of history. It's pretty cool, you know? Absolutely. Here in the, uh, what was going on uh, back then, and them goofing on it. Anthony from Boston, do you think Good Morning Vietnam's Robin Williams is based on Dave Rabbit? Absolutely not. No, Adrian Cronauer, I believe. Yeah, right? he was yeah. Uh, around the same time, obviously, but Dave Rabbit was doing his own thing. Very, very different, actually, because uh, Robin Williams, uh, the, you know, his, the character he played was high energy. This guy was all about just kind of sounding or, or being stoned. I've had a few requests for some pictures of myself. So uh, some of you people wanted to hang some on your walls or in the latrines or something. <laughs> but to tell you the honest to God truth, I have really no pictures of myself that can be made into posters. However, I do have one picture that some of you might want. It's a picture of myself and my ex-girlfriend going <laughs> in her bathtub. <laughs> now, if you like a copy of this, which is uh, blown up, by the way, into an 8x10 glossy colored photograph, just drop me a card to Dave Rabbit Pornophic Picture Poster, APO in Country 96969. <laughs> and I'll try to get one to you. More music now. Donovan. Hurdy Gertie Man. <laughs> man. Hurdy Gertie Man. Uh, he was making up all this crap because who would want a picture of him? He, he only broadcasted for three weeks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? 
Although he's probably getting a lot of letters, though. I mean, he had 20-something million people. He probably, well, that guy would make an impact pretty quickly yeah. with the soldiers, I think. Yeah. Mouthing off like that about stuff. Like uh, cornball radio they were used to. Yeah, yeah. And then him, he's just dropping F-bombs yeah. and taking a <laughs> dump. <laughs> about screwing his uh, girl and the whores and it's good stuff. And answer to some of your questions as what the base commander thinks of me, here are his exact words. If I ever meet that son of a bitch, I'm going to walk up and I'm going to hit that the right square in a goddamn teeth. More than once. Would you believe that's what the base commander thinks of me and my nasty ways? Tisk, tisk, tisk. <laughs> You, sir. <laughs> you notice I emphasize the word sir. He has an inferiority complex. I mean, after all, anybody that dresses up in women's dresses and carries a velvet purse has to be a little bit weird. <laughs> what a set, man. No kidding. And finally, the last clip, the show ending. This was the last show right here? Yeah, this is the uh, ending of that show. Uh, of this particular show. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, troops... It's that time again for good old repeat to myself. We've just about reached the ending of a, another Radio First Terminal for the night. And we'd like to leave you with a few closing thoughts. First off, remember, there is no black power or white power in Vietnam. There's only one power, and that's rabbit power another thought when you go downtown be sure to take enough rubbers along in case you want to go for two or three or four or five or six or seven like pete does well pete i've enjoyed it it's been another fantastic night of cutting the air force to pieces and saying nasty things on the air and hopefully if we're not thrown in jail by tomorrow night you'll be able to come back again at eight o'clock and blow your mind with more hard acid music so, on behalf of myself, and for good old Pete, we'd like to say good night to each other. Pete, let's say good night to each other. Good night, Pete. Good night, Danny. Sounds professional, doesn't it? Huh? Looking forward, Ben. We're tuning in again tomorrow night. And whatever comes our way. Please, don't whack off. Listen to all your first camera instead. It's more filling. Okay, Pete. We haven't practiced this, folks. This is our new ending. Uh, we say good night, Vietnam, right? All right, wait a second. Okay, folks, this is going to be one of the real biggies. Are you ready for this? Wait a minute. Don't start counting yet, please. One, two, three. Good night, Vietnam. I couldn't make out what he said there at the end. Mm. He had that good morning Vietnam. Huh? Didn't you write that he had good morning? He ended it with good morning Vietnam? No. He ended it with good evening Vietnam. Oh, oh, yeah. oh okay. Vietnam. Vietnam. okay. All right, we got to take a break. We're real late, but there you go. Dave Rabbit. That was uh, very, very interesting. And here we are at XM Satellite Radio, where we can say fuck and shit and piss. That's right. And tits. And 69ing. And twat. Jesus. Uh, Dave Rabbit, by the way. We're going to try to get him to do a little XM show. Oh, yeah? Yeah, a lot of people shouting that out at uh, at the other joint on Instant Feedback. They were doing shout-outs? They were screaming, get this guy on XM. Scream-outs? I, uh, I think people would be disappointed. Yeah. Sometimes it's good to just, like you said... He lets sleeping dogs lie. Yeah. But it's not it's not shitting on him. It's just the reality of yeah. a lot of times it's situational and he's in a, he's a he's a sixty fifty a sixty year old guy, he's a mature man. Yeah. Um I, to knock back, him. back then it was, you know, what it was. He was a young 20. guy, you're in the middle of fucking a uh, hell hole and, and you're you know, your friend is getting blown up. I bet he still does still does. He just uh started doing radio again after thirty some odd years. I I bet you he would do a good radio show, but it Absolutely. wouldn't be you know, what we hear on those tapes. There's a magic in those tapes. It's almost like 50s music always depresses me because the, the hmm. era is dead and gone. It's something so weird about 50s music. It really makes me sad. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that there's something magical, as, as corny as that is, about what he's doing there. Mm -hmm. But so much of it is situational. He's this maverick in it's Vietnam. It's such a time. Yeah, it was also, the time. To hear his voice um, a bit older mm -hmm. and crystal clear. 
would take away from it. Yeah. Remember some of those old sitcoms and they would come back and they look just a little older? <laughs> Christmas and now special. And now they're in color instead of black and white. And, you, and it just bummed you out. Yeah. <laughs> it right. just bummed you out, man. Yeah, you don't want to see that. Like when they did the the honeymooners uh, like thing, didn't Jackie Gleason have a mustache? Oh At God, really? yeah, yeah, like you, you, like someone we know. And, and <laughs> you for <Buford> Tate Comia, <laughs> <laughs> you looked a lot taller on your presidential speeches. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest, hey boy, boy. boy. So um, where's Sheriff Branford? <laughs> I, I think he he might be able to pull off that look. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I, I'm actually already used to it. Yeah. yeah. Good. He actually looks a little younger. Thank you. Yeah, that's uh, what I heard. You do. Mm, I th- you always, when a guys with goatees shave their mustaches completely, my friend Kenny did it years ago, and then Keith Robinson did it. Their face always reminds me of a, a vagina. Like they have like a vagina oh, mouth. It's just vagina mouth. weird looking to see yeah. without hair like that. Yeah. You want to use it like one, you fucking um, love little to. whore? I'd love to. Especially now, <laughs> because if I turn you sideways, only half of it has hair like one lip. It's so <laughs> creepy looking. <laughs> <laughs> Transmission 11, received 0500 hours, Sector King, Zulu King. Good evening again, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host for the next three hours of hard acid rock music, Dave Rabbit. Starting at 10.15 tomorrow, we'll be airing the entire Dave Rabbit tape that Obi found in its entirety. Right Don't adjust your radios. The sound quality isn't going to be great, but you will be listening to the stone stylings of Dave Rabbit. That's tomorrow, starting at 10.15, only on XM202. Fuck it before it fucks you. Lee Abrams on the okay. phone. I don't, I don't call him stupid Lee Abrams when he's actually on the phone. Lee! Hey! <laughs> What's hey. up, Lee? Oh, not too much. Everything's under control. Uh, we asked you oh. yesterday. You don't know anything about Dave Rabbit, first of all? Oh, yeah. You know, I got that uh, yeah, note. I just know that he was one of these guys at this, like, underground radio station in Vietnam and was saying, you know, the war is bad and beaming it at all the, the soldiers and uh, uh, was kind of doing, you know, military underground radio and uh, kind of a legendary thing. And the only thing I know is uh, I heard he's, like, living in Hawaii as a... A building contract or something, but kind of this uh, thing that uh, you know you hear about and heard about him and read about it over the years, but really didn't know too much about it other than uh, having the ball shoot underground radio station in uh, Vietnam in yeah. 1969 or whatever. 71. Yeah, 71, and uh, he called today from Dallas. And he's uh, he's starting to do radio again. I'm thinking we should uh, try to figure something out with XM. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, definitely. We'll get Saturday a, get Night Virus from him. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, <laughs> put him on the show. And just, uh, I'm sure he wasn't following some format and hot clock, so it's probably pretty inventive. <laughs> right, you're right. He uh, was. He was actually genuinely funny. Yeah, he was just talking about whores and blowjobs and and hard ons and talking drugs. over the fucking lyrics. Oh yeah, just talking through the entire song. He didn't give a shit. Yeah, he was great. So I'm not giving a shit. That's great. That's I wish there was more of that today. <laughs> he he we, means that, Mike. No, he really does. <laughs> yeah, he's sick of regular radio. Sick of oh, it. Oh God. Yeah. It's it's unbelievable. Right. It's it's like God, there's this F C C mandated law to be uh, lame. Yeah. 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 God. Uh, an underground DJ from uh Vietnam. Oh, okay. He uh did twenty one shows and then they shut him down and he had to run away and then he just like left radio for thirty some odd years. Wow. And uh I found a tape and we've been playing some of uh you know the um breaks. For example, I got this is uncensored from earlier. Well swingers, it's that time again for Pink myself. No, not the end of the program. But both of us are getting kind of horny. And uh, kind of hungry at that. <laughs> so we're going to go down the hall and give us a big, juicy twat burger. So, uh, as soon as we go down and have a quick bite to eat, a box lunch or something, we'll be back for another hour and a half of hard acid rock music. We're now going to return you to the regular crappy programming <laughs> of the American Forces Vietnamese Network. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, yeah. fucking uh, <coughs> balls on him, man. Yeah. Just a high the gigantic 69, Vietnam's only psychedelic FM stereo multiplex station, James Gang. 
S-T-O-P, which can mean stop or state tax on pussy. <laughs> Pussy. You imagine, especially with the way things were so restricted in the late like you imagine hearing this on the fucking radio. Oh, oh. that the soldiers must have loved this fucking dude. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Oh, the photo one. This is what he said. Just uh, setting this up for tomorrow. We're gonna do the whole thing tomorrow, ten fifteen, in its entirety. I've had a few requests for some pictures of myself. So uh, some of you people wanted to hang some on your walls or in the latrines or something. But to tell you the honest to God truth, I have really no pictures of myself that can be made into posters. However, I do have one picture that some of you might want. It's a picture of myself and my ex-girlfriend going 69 in her bathtub. <laughs> now, if you'd like a copy of this, which is uh, blown up, by the way, into an 8x10 glossy colored photograph, <laughs> just drop me a card to Dave Rabbit Pornophic picture poster APO in country 96969 and I'll try to get one to you more music now Donovan Hurdy Gertie man hmm. guy yeah. rules yeah he absolutely does and then one more and then we'll get out of here for today in answer to some of your questions as what the base commander thinks of me here are his exact words if I ever meet that son of a bitch, I'm going to walk up and I'm going to hit that motherfucker right square in a goddamn teeth. More than once. Would you believe that's what the base commander thinks of me and my nasty ways? Tisk, tisk, tisk. Fuck you, sir. You noticed I emphasized the word sir. He has an inferiority complex. I mean, after all, anybody that dresses up in women's dresses and carries a velvet purse has to be a little bit weird. <laughs> he's, uh, he's a classic. Transmission 11, receive 050 hours. Sector King, Zulu King. Good evening again, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host for the next three hours of hard acid rock music. Dave Rabbit.